All right, in this next chapter, we're going to see how we can get all these assets we've been creating inside of Unity in a quick, efficient way. I know uh, there's other videos and tutorials out there that have shown you how to do it. Well, this is the way I've found to be the most uh, compelling, quick, and efficient. All right, so let's go ahead and look at that assets folder I was working with. Chapter 1, Assignment 1, Assets. And you'll notice I have all my meshes here now and all my textures I kind of jumped ahead this is what you should have downloaded from let's get rid of that Maya swatches file that's just a Maya thing don't need it anymore so these are all the uh, assets you can download from the Moodle um, uh, online thing that I've uh, zipped up for you guys online so this is what it gives you so the first thing we're gonna do is obviously we have to open up uh, unity right so I'm gonna go to my start menu and there's some of the programs I like to use anyway so here we have unity and before I just click on unity I want to do something unity automatically defaults to the last project you have open the last project I have open was a pretty big game file that I was working on a few months back I don't want to open that I want to be able to create my own unity uh, project so let's do two things before we do that or two things to be able to do that let's navigate back to let's close this window and let's go back to chapter one assignment one and see I have my assets folder well right in that same area I want to create a new folder right next to it let's call this unity project and this is where we're gonna set our unity project to be this is where unity is gonna live for our chapter one assignment one alright great next thing we have to do to make sure we can get a new unity project set up is for all you PC users out there I don't know about Mac, sorry if you're using a Mac. Um, anyway, hold down the Alt key, hold down the Alt key, and then click your Unity launcher. What this does is it brings up the default, you know, Unity, what do you want to do? You want to open up this, you want to open up that. What we're going to do is we're just going to go to Create New Project. Rule of thumb, never really bring in any packages because you can always do it later within your uh, you know scene or your project if you need them and what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to browse and guess what we're gonna go and play folder tag again let's go to my desktop I don't recommend storing on your folders and files on your desktop by the way this is just the easiest for this purpose store them on uh, I don't know in your in a documents folder with all your schoolwork and then back it up on an external trust me do those things do it now pause the video and do it now alright you're back okay good SGD 113, Chapter 1, Assignment 1, because hmm, I don't want to do my digital tutors lessons. Let's go to Assignment 1. Let's select this folder we call, uh, call uh, called Unity Project that we made a few seconds ago. Alright, and this is where it's going to build our new Assignment 1 Unity Project. And let's create it. And make sure it's set to 3D because we're making a 3D game right now. So we go to Create. And since we're not loading any packages, Unity loads up a new version of unity is available uh... i'll skip it right now because i'm sure you don't want to see me download something for a few minutes right alright so we got this fresh ultra fancy fresh new clean squeaky clean set of uh... unity folders and assets wait there's none of that there's no assets we have an assets folder but nothing alright so let's go over some uh... practical uh... setup uh, and uh... project prep real quick with your brand new scene of unity alright so in assets we have this uh, project panel right here right so I'm gonna go in and create my first thing which is gonna be a folder and we're gonna call this meshes alright and a quick little shortcut uh, by default whenever you have anything in this little project panel right here you see this big bulky little folder here I found a little sh neat shortcut that I like using if you hold down the control key and mouse wheel scroll you can change the view of it and I can even go down to list mode I like using this I mean if you get a lot of meshes in here you'll see what I'll talk about in a second let's go ahead and just make our, our folder hierarchy here let's call this textures because we're going to need those and you can kind of think ahead materials I like to have my materials in my own folder let's create a uh, prefabs folder that's pretty neat let's create a scenes folder in case we have a few lo different levels we want to make and let's make a scripts and I think that's about all we need and 
if you'll notice, let's go ahead and navigate our way to our Unity project here. So this is what these are all the files Unity just made whenever we made the new project. And if we go to assets here, we can see all these folders we made. All right, listen to this. Listen to this. Never, ever, ever organize, rename, delete, add anything in your Windows folders. Anything like. Never organize, rename, do anything in your explore window right here always do it in your project panel because what unity does is it creates meta files that attaches all these different meshes and textures together if you go in here and start renaming things the little dot meta files are not going to be able to know what you're talking about anymore and you're going to lose connections your project's going to go down the drain and you're going to be a little be a little sad be a little sad panda so never never organize outside of unity always do it inside and it's easy it's just drag and drop I mean it's basically your new explorer window here alright so let's get our meshes in here and I know the video told you to do it by uh, import new asset and then go to your stupid asset folder and just click 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 and then do it and oh can we select more than one no we can't you know okay forget that mess we're gonna do it the ultra fancy way that I've developed well <laughs> I didn't develop it but I know about it anyway so let's go to assignment one and let's go to our assets folder where we downloaded all the stuff from uh, Moodle and here are all my f little assets here okay I'm going to just go to control a select them all or you can press alt and bring up your little file thing up here go to edit select all or you can click the first one shift click to the last one it doesn't matter just learn how to select everything all at once I've showed you a few ways just now and then we're just gonna simply click and drag into make sure we're in the meshes folder into here bada bing bada boom everything's in here alright few things to do delete that stupid materials folder it just had that Lambert one we exported everything from alright next thing to do control A to select everything in your folder and we're going to mess with the inspector we're gonna get these assets nice and set up so we don't have to go to each one and set the inspector settings you know that we need to so the first thing we're doing we're already in these animations little thing we'll, we'll uncheck import animations no animations came why don't we, we need to import them and I'm gonna uncheck it and hit apply unity is updating the dot meta file let me show you what I'm talking about so let's go to assignment one unity project assets and in our meshes let's see let's go here Lambert one two see we got that stupid Lambert folder in there whatever the meta files haven't been created yet they'll get there so it was just updating all those I thought I got rid of that get out of here you alright so I got rid of that stupid materials so to select them all again shift click does it all alright and now let's go to our model folder um, scale factor I like to keep it 0.01 if you export out in centimeters then the scale factor 0.01 is going to be just fine for that mesh compression uh, if you're worried about stuff you can go to low never go to medium and high I've noticed that if you have large models medium and high will actually mess with the geometry and vertices of your models I'm gonna keep it off for right now uh, import blend shapes I don't have any blend shapes on these uh, meshes generate colliders yeah let's check that no because generate colliders is gonna make mesh colliders for every single object in here and remember we don't want mesh colliders on everything that just causes more strain on the engine uh, generate light map UVs this is very important because when you're lighting inside of unity you need to have a second set of UVs for the light maps if you don't know what that means it doesn't matter just always check it for everything you bring in and go to advanced okay all these default things I've always found to be pretty spot-on import materials uncheck that and pretty much make your model thing look like mine right now and don't forget to hit apply so basically this is updating every single mesh all at once inside of Maya and you don't have to go in and do anything crazy or stupid or you know one by one oh this is a pain we've done them all at the same time everything has its own UV light maps everything is uh, you know no blend shapes or animations have been brought in 
we're good to go. So let's go to my textures folder and do the same thing. Let me minimize this and bring up my textures folder, my textures. And there those beautiful babies are. All right, so same thing. I like to hit Control A to select all in my folder. And we're just going to bring them down here. All right. And you can do it. There's a little bit of uh, texture prep that you can do if you want to. And, you know, they're taking a little bit. These textures were at 248. Uh, so it's going to take a little bit to uh, import them in. And basically all this is doing is it's basically copying all our assets into our Unity folder that we created up there. All right. So there's a few things we can do. Here, you remember those uh, little GUI, uh, graphic user interface pickup things? We can go ahead and select those. And we can go ahead and turn these to GUI textures. Hit apply. Great. And if you wanted to, you could go and select every single normal one at a time and turn them into normals. But, yeah, revert. I like just fixing them whenever I'm making the material. Um, next thing, if you want to make sure that all your materials are at the resolution you want, by default, Unity Max sizes them at 110, 24. So let's say that, you know, I want my walls to be the resolution that they should be, which is 2048. I can select my wall textures right here and just make sure they're at 2048, the size we brought them in. Um, hit apply. You know, it'll take it a bit because it's re-importing, recopying. It can be a little bit of a time sink because you know it's moving big folders, 2048 JPEGs. They're not that big in file size compared to like a Targa or a TIFF or something, but it can take a little bit. So now we're making sure that these wall textures are 2048. Things like the you know, know the, the floor, or, you know, maybe a barrel. Maybe those shouldn't be so big. You can even make those a little bit lower. Make sure they don't go above uh, 512 if you wanted. We're talking resolution in pixels here. Uh, the an the anisotropic filtering level, you can uh, choose to make that a little bit higher. Just know that the more spiffy you make things, you know, maybe the worse off you are with uh, f render at frame time. And if you'll notice, if you try to do it all at once, you know, the anisotropic filtering goes away because they don't want you to do anything that'll make catastrophic, you know, changes that'll really cut down your frame. So if a few different things, a uh, diff few different textures are getting muddled at weird angles, the anisotropic filtering basically sharpens the texture if you see it at a severe angle. So, you know, like if you're looking at it, you know, all, like 80 degrees, really shallow angles. Anyway, so we got our uh, materials in there, our uh, textures for our materials. Um, yeah, so I can show you how to make a quick prefab real quick. Uh, let's do a uh, just a simple hallway. So let's bring in... A ceiling. Let's go and bring in a wall one and a wall two. And I guess I need a floor. Floor raise would be pretty good. And I've got all these four little uh, meshes selected. I was holding down control to make multiple selections. And I don't like just placing them anywhere in here. I, I like to drag them into my hierarchy because they automatically get. Since we have nice exporting, we already get zeroed out transforms. You don't get lost somewhere out in the wilderness. I I hate that. All right, so so where's our wall one? Oh, there it was. See how uh, it only renders one side? There's Unity for you. So to get the thing snapped, I hold down the V key. V is in vector or Victor, and I not I'm not pressing any mouse buttons. I'm just holding the V key, and, it, and this is saying, okay, I want to pivot from this point. I hold down the left click, and now I can select which vertex I want to snap it to. So I want to snap it to that one. Alright. Great. So I'm going to pull this out so I can make sure I get the right kind of pivot. Hold down the V key. I want to pivot from this back corner and I want to place it right on there. Alright. So one of these is my ceiling. And I can use my hierarchy there to go and raise the ceiling. And I like to kind of get it away from things so I can use my V key, V as in vector, to really snap them where they need to go. Alright, great. So now we have my scene, my little hall prefab made. Let's uh, make some materials. And I know I'm going to need a few different materials. I know I'm going to need a, a floor mat, underscore mat for material. That's just a habit I have of making sure, you know, things are labeled correctly. And I'm going to need, a, well, I made a folder. 
create. I'm just right clicking in my materials folder, going to create material. We'll call this wall 01 map. We're going to have two different wall textures, so we're going to have to create two different materials for that. Uh, wall 02 mat. Now let's play the material game. I'm just going to select my ceiling mat, go down to textures, and my ceiling mat still here. Let's go ahead and change it to a bump diffuse. There we go. And then what do we got? This is ceiling, so let's find my ceiling diffuse. I'm just going to left click and drag it, pop it in there. Ceiling normal. Let's go ahead and put my normal on my normal map. See how it's saying? This is not marked as a normal map. Are you crazy? Yeah, I want to fix it now. Let's do that. And then we can test it out. Notice how my ceiling is still kind of white, kind of whatever. Let's go ahead and click ceiling mat, left click, drag, and drop it on there. And now we have my ceiling made. And let's quickly go through there. I'll select floor. And then I'm going to select my textures. Notice how my floor material is still in the inspector. Change it bump to the fuse floor diffuse and really it's just there's no secret in doing all this it's just sometimes you're gonna have to plug and play and make all your materials one by one that's just the most perfect way I know how to do it uh, got an alarm for a doctor's appointment need to hurry this up anyway so textures for uh, wall 01 let's just do it real quick let's change this to a bump diffuse There we go. We'll fix it. Let's do the same over here for Wall02 because, you know, Wall02's got to get some love. Change it to Bump Diffuse so we can get that normal map on there. Fix it, baby. Alright. So, Wall01. What? That doesn't look right. Alright, that gets that. And this gets that. All right, let's make a uh, let's make this little piece of hallway have a light on it. So I'm gonna go to my meshes, and let's look for light. I'm just gonna drop my light in here, and I'm just gonna position my light like right there. You know, every good every good you know maybe position right in the middle of one of those panels there. Every good hallway needs a good light. You know, that's what my mom always said. Okay, right click, go to create and uh, material and you know what are we gonna call this lights maybe I don't know let's go to our textures I've stored made a props uh, and we can even open this up we'll open up in a Windows Explorer and you'll notice I have this kind of props layout these were uh, assets made on digital tutors these don't reflect any kind of my work I just kinda I actually had to do a lot of work to make these things work for you guys and, ugh, whatever digital tutors love them and hate them anyway so uh, a lot of these things I have uh, different models attached to this one single texture so I'm gonna go back to my materials and I'm just gonna make on this new material I'm just gonna call this props map and we're gonna apply the same material to multiple op game objects in the world so textures and there's my props I'm not gonna make a pun I want to but I think I'd hate myself later and we're just going to drag and drop. Oh, there we go. Drag and drop it on there, right there. And now we have our light set up in here. Cool. One last thing we can do to make an awesome prefab. Let's make sure that this light is emitting a light. So let's go to uh, Game Object, Create Other. Let's give it a nice point light. And we're going to name this point light uh, Wall, or let's call it Light Blue. I don't know. Just name it something that makes sense to you. And let's adjust the principles of it. That white is blue right there. Let's go in and give it a kind of a... You don't want to make it sickening blue because that's not how light works. You want to kind of just give it a nice kind of faded blue tint there. Alright. And why don't we just position this as close as we can. Well, that's huge. Let's get the range down because good lord. Alright. We'll push it right there. You know, increase the range a little bit. You know, you don't want to get it too close or too far away from the actual light. Maybe increase the intensity. I think I want to make that light a little bit deeper blue. Alright. 
so now we have a hallway that's uh, emitting this nice blue light for us. And now we want to make a prefab. All right. I don't like that. I want my range to be hitting this other wall. There we go. That's a little dark. Hmm. Anyway, we'll just keep going. Uh, so here's my old hall prefab I like. Everything is positioned right in the center of the grid. And when you're making prefabs, you want your prefab that you're making to be right in the center. You don't want to be making it off in some weird, weird, weird area. So let's go to Game Object, Create Empty. And we'll call this uh, PFB for Prefab uh, Hall Light. Because this is a hallway. Maybe we should call it Hall Straight Light. And we're just going to control click every, except for the prefab, every little thing we have made. Drag it and drop in there. And uh, the quick way to make prefabs is not to go into the prefab folder and create the new prefab. If you just take an empty uh, game object you've got parented up here, just drag and drop it into any kind of folder, preferably your prefab folder, it's going to make a prefab for you. You don't have to create it or anything. And I'm going to go up here and just... Oh, I made a mistake. That's a good way to... That's a good example. So if I delete this prefab, notice how it doesn't kill anything up here. Notice how, though, all these things are red. It's because everything that was in a prefab isn't anymore, but it's still kind of in the game world. Well, I made a fatal error. Look, I didn't when I made the new game object, I didn't reset the transforms. So for right now, the arrows are just kind of floating around in anywhere. So I'm going to go in and make sure in zero every new game object you make out. So let's try this again. There we go. Now my prefab is happy again and everything's zeroed out. So if I delete this, I can bring it in. I can even bring in another one. And prefabs are cool. If you click on a prefab once, it selects the whole thing. You can even uh, set the snap on it so I can snap them together. And if you want to select something inside the prefab, you click it once. It selects everything in the prefab. You select the, the exact object you want, and you have uh, access to whatever you want. So let's bring in even another one, maybe. And something cool about prefabs. If you want to change the intensity of the light in this prefab, instead of going in and doing it for each one, you know, if we go to light here, or light blue, you know, change the intensity. It only changes the intensity for that one, right? What if we go to our prefab down here in our uh, project window and change it there? Boom. Prefabs are awesome. Instant global changes on everything. All right. And don't forget to uh, go in and select your uh, floor right here inside of our prefab. Oh, I forgot to add collision on everything. Never fear. <laughs> Ceiling, walls, all this stuff. You know, since this is a uh, light geometry, uh, I deem it okay to make light geometry mesh colliders just because it's fast and, you know, <laughs> a few extra verts isn't going to kill anything. So I like using flat, flattish pieces of geometry as mesh colliders there. And we can go to add component with everything selected in my prefab. Go to physics, mesh collider. All right, great. So let's bring in a character controller. I'm going to right click on assets import package character controller with everything checked let's import it all and it's going to create this new folder called standard assets we click on it click on it first person controller let's just drag and drop this baby in the scene and where'd they put him of course they put him a million miles away so let's go into our inspector and change the position Zero, tab, zero, tab, zero. All right, now he's a little, he's a little capsule buddy. With our new in there, there we go. Oh wait, that snap is kind of making these garish seams. Uh, it's not very good. How can we fix that? Let's go into our first person controller, main camera. And we can actually go to our background and change it to black. 
now our background is black and when we go into our game world garish seems no longer as a big deal and now we have this nice little hallway built with prefabs and it's just super awesome and into the abyss I go if you ever get like weirded out and don't know how to quit something control and P will cancel out the game you're trying out alright there's a few more things I can show you but I think I've gone too far in this lesson I'm gonna go ahead and si say sayonara and sign out um, you guys have fun making prefabs and making sure that uh, everything is good and imported and uh, have fun with the project.